Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to take high quality pictures and videos from your Android smartphone. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about how to record the desktop, if you will, or the screens on your Android device. Now, whether it's a smartphone, whether it's a tablet, whatever it may be, if it runs Android, chances are this app is going to work for you. Now, the app in question today is called DU Recorder. Now, I'll show you what it is, where to get it from, and all that coming up now. So first of all, I'm going to start off DU Recorder so you can actually see what I'm doing on my screen, and hopefully the screen will pop up adjacent next to me up over here so you can follow what I'm doing and you can hopefully do the same thing yourself on your own device. Okay, so now I've started up the recorder, which you possibly can't tell from the uh, the device because all you normally see is when you're recording is there's a very small dot in the corner which you can control with your finger to move around so if it's in the way and it shows you the timer of how long it's been recording. So also um, it shows you other things, but we'll go inside in a little bit. So first of all, let's take a look at the Play Store and see where we actually get this from. So go into our shopping section and go into the Play Store. And if you type in DU, I always want to say something that my daughter used to say, because she used to say DO when she was younger, but anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. So DU Recorder is one of the first ones that comes up. So if you click on that, that's what the icon looks like. And as you can see from the screen, DU Recorder, Screen Recorder, Video Editor, and Live which I'm sure there's probably a word missing there, but still. You can actually live stream from your device using this program to things like Twitch, YouTube, and all that kind of stuff, Facebook. Um, I won't be going into that in too much detail in this particular video. This is going to be focusing primarily on just your basic Android desktop capture, okay? But if you do want to find out more details, uh, let me know in the comments section anything else you'd like to know about the program, and I'll do my best to uh, address it in a future video or uh, maybe I can email you with some information but let me know in the comments if you want to see more about it. So anyway that is the application it's absolutely free completely free there is an upgrade you can purchase to add more features to it but for the basic screen recording and capture there is no cost involved whatsoever which is why I'm using it because you know what it's like here on Mike's Unboxing we like to do things as cheaply as we possibly can or get good value for money and this totally ticks the bill for that particular well for both of those things. So let's click on open and we'll take a look at the actual app itself. So this is the DU Recorder application. Now it starts off on the video side, so it shows you videos you've done. Um, there's one that I've recorded, well two recorded ones. There's one that's actually tried to repair where I actually was recording the video and I turned the phone off on the side and it actually went on and then I managed to actually repair the footage. So thumbs up to that. So we've probably all done it before. We've tried to record something on a phone, thought we're done, press the power off button, then realize you never stopped recording. So this actually recovered that footage. So for me, that is a lifesaver. Saved me doing a whole new video shoot. But anyway, so that's the first window. So that gives you your videos. Go to the next one. You've got snapshots because you can take snapshots with this as well. In the live section, now this is actually where there are other people streaming live. So people using D recorder streaming. So there's a, a Roblox thing going on there and a Minecraft thing. So if that's your thing, you can check it out. Uh, next one across is the settings. So you've got options to edit a video, merge videos and images, turn a video into a GIF or GIF, depending what you pronounce it as. There's the Wi-Fi file transfer, which can be quite handy if you don't have a USB cable handy to transfer these files over. And you've got an option to uh, edit images and stitch images together to create either a GIF or a AVI type file or MP4. And the last one across there is the settings cog. So in the settings, there's options you've got. You've actually got another option. You can actually get, um, you can make money out of this app by using it and promoting it from their own promotion section. So you, you can earn money by doing that. Personally for me, I've chosen not to uh, because when you do the promotion, if I go into it now, you can have a look. Um, if you actually want to do it and log in, you've got to give them access to your YouTube channel and to content, which I'm a little bit uncomfortable with, so I haven't done that. So this isn't a promoted video in any way, shape or form. This is purely based on my own use and uh, my recommendations. Um, anyway, so in the settings, you've got the video settings. So video resolution, uh, 1440p I've got because this is a Nokia 8 and it will do that resolution. 1080p, 720, 540, uh, all those settings. So depending on how powerful your phone is, there obviously is an overhead of screen recording, so do bear that in mind. If for any reason um, 
your chosen resolution is a little bit jerky or laggy or whatever, then you can always knock it down a bit. For most streaming purposes, 480p is fine, 720 is ideal, but for me, when I'm doing this for the YouTube videos, I always record in 1080p um, when I put the image on the side here. And even when the video is put on a, a larger screen, like a 1440 screen, in full screen, it still looks pretty sharp and pretty clear with no nasty jaggy edges. So uh, that's my recommendation. This is for the Nokia 8. So that's the video resolution options. You've also got video quality. Now I've set mine to auto. This works out your uh, megabit rate for your videos. Now you could set a fixed rate. So say 480p streaming would probably get away with one megabit per second, but sometimes because of things going on with the phone or your internet connection, then it may need to change the video quality uh, accordingly. So I leave mine on automatic and I haven't found any problems with that whatsoever. But again, the options there if you wish. Uh, going to frames per second. Now frames per second, generally I would recommend leaving this to auto. Uh, the reason why I've got mine set to 50 frames per second is because I'm filming with the Lumix G7 camera, which in the UK for PAL users is either 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second to match in with our electrical system for 50 hertz. Now obviously for those in the US, if you're using 60 hertz um, for your stuff, then absolutely fine. You can put either 60 frames per second or the kind of the de facto standard 30 frames per second for YouTube videos and that kind of thing. But again, um, the choice is yours. You can actually make it lower. 15 frames per second is the lowest you can go to, which to be honest, I would say is probably unusable for most things. Uh, 25 and 30 probably being the very minimum you can get away with. So there's frames per second, fully uh, adjustable. Again, depending on the power of your device. Uh, video orientation, you've got auto, so if for some reason you use it and you spin the phone round, it will actually turn the footage around as well. So if you're playing games, that kind of thing, or you've got a widescreen presentation, uh, you can work with that as well. Uh, recording audio, now this is a, an odd thing. Android doesn't allow you to record audio internally. So this actually works by recording the audio using the microphone in the actual phone or device and recording what is coming out of your loudspeaker. Um, I have found in some instances this works really well. Sometimes it's had a few issues, but on the whole, generally it's fine. But this is a, an Android problem, so there's not really a lot you can do to get around that. Uh, next one, down video location, so you can actually choose where the footage is stored. If you've got an SD card, you can uh, choose to store it actually on your SD card um, or phone's internal memory, whichever you choose to do. And there's various other settings you've got there. Recording mode uh, set to standard. There's a few modes you can change. Uh, there's options for shaking the phone to stop recording. So if you twist the phone, it'll stop recording. Um, loads of different options on there to remove the icon on the desktop to show when you're recording, that kind of thing. But that's it, there's, a, there's an absolute, absolute ton of settings there. So let's close that back down and we go back to our desktop. Now on the desktop, if I click on the, the button, you can see the recording options. So you've got a pause, you've got the stop button, because obviously we're recording already. And at the bottom, you've got the, uh, the toolbar or toolbox so in this you can choose screenshot mode so you get another little icon so you can click it and that will take a screenshot of what's going on and it will capture it to your device and you can always check it or delete it or whatever you want to do with that that's all well and good uh, also you've got the option for a camera and this is the quite a scary one so turn on camera and it will turn on your phone's internal camera so if you're doing say a piece to camera you can actually do it straight to the camera on your phone and everything's all good and you can move it around to suit wherever you want so if you've got something you're doing maybe on Outlook and you want it to be over this side or up at the top covering something up, then that's uh, all well and good. You can do whatever you want to do. And also you can make that bigger as well, which I probably shouldn't do. Let's just turn that off. So let's go back into the desktop. So again, the screen recording option and you can move that around that floats as well. So you can stick it wherever you want. Also, if you pull the screen down from the top, it actually uh, comes down from the top and you can see your other notifications and you've got the stop button, pause, and the D recorder options, all those kinds of things. Uh, I think that pretty much sums it up. There's a few other options you've got there. The GIF recorder, which again is a similar thing to a screenshot, so it's just a, a longer capture. The brush, so you can actually draw on the screen, but that is actually a value added feature, so you would need to subscribe or uh, pay your subscription for this for the yearly or monthly. And also there's a watermark option, which by default, we'll put the derecorder.com uh, on the bottom of your screen, but you can change that to your own personal logo or your own web address if you should see fit. 
So essentially that is pretty much it. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on under the hood, but for me, I found this program to be very reliable, very useful, and best of all, it was completely free for recording high quality screen capture. So I've been Mike, this is The Recorder, and we'll catch you again in the very next video. Thanks for watching.